what, what the haters talking about. What's up, family? Question. How are you getting along with your significant other during the COVID-19 lockdown? I spoke with a friend of mine who is a family lawyer, and she said the phone is ringing off the hook. They want out. Everybody want out. Men want out. Women want out. The dog want out. Everybody want out. What is going on, fam? I am tripping because I'm saying to myself, how is it that people can't stand being with each other, can't stand being around each other for extended periods of time? For right now going on like, what, a couple of months? And they're already at their wit's end? They're already ready to go to war? What type of foundation was that relationship built on is the question. Now, I'll tell you this. In the past, I have been in relationships where well, I probably wouldn't have lasted for two months being around somebody day in and day out. But that is before I wised up and understood what it really requires to be in a long-term committed relationship. Let me give you the secret. You know what? I ain't going to give you the secret right now. I got a few other questions. Uh, I want to know how you're doing. I want to know, do you think your relationship is going to survive? Can it survive? And also, is it still good to you? I need to know. A lot of people are, have reached that point to where they're no longer intimate. They don't want to touch their significant other. The thrill is gone. How can you get it back? That's the question. If it's gone, how can you get it back? I got an idea. How about trying to do what it was you did to get the person in the first place? See, that is a big part of staying in a strong relationship. Doing whatever it Whatever you did to get that person, continuing to do that. You know how when you first meet somebody, you know, you're on your best behavior. You're always making sure you smell good, you look good, you taste good. You're always being considerate. You don't mind stopping to grab somebody a bite to eat or picking up their clothes from the cleaners. You always want to go out with that person because you want to let the world know. Got my boot, got my baby. It's mine. You're out there. You're together. And then somewhere down the line, you just kind of get bored or you lose interest. And then life happens a lot. And we just allow life to happen instead of doing certain things. When we start seeing that it's kind of tailing off. We kind of just let it happen. And then the more it tails off, the wider the gap becomes. The wider the gap becomes, the harder it is to come back together. Because you really kind of get to a point to where you resent one another. And then you start not looking after each other, not paying each other compliments as much. And then what does that do? That opens the door for outsiders to come in and fill the void. So I think that once you get with somebody that you feel like you really, really like and you're compatible with, 
The key is to never plant seeds of doubt and do the things that you did from the beginning. People grow at different rates and you can do all the right things and that person still may not act right. That's the way humans are. That's the risk you take in the game of love. So no crying. Don't be over that crying and moping and all that stuff because greater people than us have been through it. You dig? That is the game you play when you play the game of love. That's just what it is. You can do all the right things. None of us are perfect, but we can do all the right things in our book and it still may not work out. That's just how it is. Doesn't mean that love don't work. Doesn't mean that there's not someone out there for you that works exactly for you. Just means that you just ain't found them. This is why it's important to not make sweeping generalizations like, oh, all women ain't nothing. All men ain't nothing. You ain't dated all men. You ain't dated all women. So how would you know? Okay, here's my secret to being in a long-term committed relationship. I'm about to give y'all a million dollars worth of game for free. Nah, I can't give it to you for free. Drop $100 in my cash app or my PayPal or something like that and I'll give you the game. You know it's worth a whole lot more. I'm talking about like a whole lot more. Drop me a little old donation like that or something, and then I'll I give you the game. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just messing with y'all. <laughs> I ain't going to do y'all like that. Listen, this is the way I see it. Now, I could be wrong, but this is the way I see it, and this is the way that has worked for me. First and foremost, you have to like the person. Notice I said like, not love. Because, see, love is one of those things that can come and go. When you like a person, you like being around them. Think about your best friend. Some of us haven't had an argument with our best friend in years. And even, even if we've had an argument with them recently, the argument prior to that was probably years ago. You know why? Because we understand how valuable a good friend is. We understand how hard it is to find one. We understand how much betrayal is out there. How hard it is to find someone you truly trust that you will trust with the things that are most dear to you, your secrets, your money, your, your family, your life. We understand that. So we protect our friendship. We guard our friendships. We don't even let certain kinds of people around our friends because we protect that friendship that much and we respect it that much. Well, doesn't it make sense if someone lays their head next to you at night when you're most vulnerable, you sleep, they got access to you, they can go open the door and let some killers in there and take you out. Doesn't it make more sense to have the same amount of respect and regard for that person if not more, but somehow we got it backwards. Many of us care more about what our friends think than we do our significant other. So that significant other is more than just a partner because see, some people think because, oh, we work good together that we're made for each other because we work good together. But they can't bring themselves to touch each other intimately. The excitement is gone. The, the love 
is gone. Or you can say the love is there, but they don't get you going anymore on the intimate side. And they're more like a roommate than a lover. So when you get to that part, to, back to that piece where you like that person, then that's when you really sow yourself into that person. You ever notice how when somebody do something nice for you, like when your partner, anytime a partner really does nice things for you, and sometimes they do something that nobody's done for you, and it's, it's, a, it's a nice gesture. Notice how it turn you on. Notice how when that person, when somebody offends you, and your partner immediately takes your side instead of questioning well, what, what, what you do. But they immediately take your side. Right or wrong, they just take your side. Now, y'all can work it out later, but up front, they taking your side. Like, that's, that, that turned me on. That kind of stuff turned me on. A rider. So, one of the things that go with that is what I alluded to earlier, talking about doing what you did to get the person in the first place. Remembering those things that you did to get that person. Make sure you, you whatever it is. But one of the things that I do notice in relationships oftentimes is people let themselves go. They let themselves go and they also stop practicing those uh, love languages, whatever that love language may be, whether it's gifts, words of affirmation or whatever, they let it go. Remember a person's love language. If you're not speaking their love language, then you're talking in a language that they can't understand. It's all foreign to them. If you're not speaking their love language, you're speaking another language that they can't even interpret. So you got to keep that in mind. Even if it's something that you really don't want to do, you kind of do it anyway for your partner. A lot of times we do things that we may not be interested in doing or we may not be up to do, but we know that we're going to do it because we know that it makes the person that we're doing it for feel good. Uh, sometimes I've been in situations where I've had a lot going on, but my friend got something going on and it's important to him. It's important to her. I go because I know how important it is to them. It's an investment. I'm investing in the friendship. So I have no problem. So we have to remember to invest in our relationships, not work on the relationship, because that's where a lot of people go wrong. They try to work on relationships. They try to work on marriages. I'm not working on no relationship. I'm not working on no marriage. I already got a job. You know how when you work, sometimes you want a day off. Sometimes you don't feel like working. Well, in relationships, there are no days off. So if you feel like you got to work all the time, sometimes you may not feel like working and the other person wants you to work. They're ready for you to put the work in. You don't feel like working. Now you got a problem. So I will invest in a relationship, but I'm not working on one. I will invest in the relationship. I will invest my time. I will invest my energy. I will invest my money. I will invest my knowledge. Now here's another thing, and it is very significant. You cannot skip this. You must have the pet peeve talk. What is the pet peeve talk? That is when you and your partner sit down and tell one another what it is you like about each other and what it is that you don't. You should have the pet peeve talk around the time that 
you find yourself spending quality time with a person. Not once you fall all the way in and you know you in love and y'all a couple and you're going all the way. I'm talking about before you even decide that you guys are an item. Before you commit to a relationship, you must have the pet peeve talk. Because once you start spending quality time with a person, at any moment you can fall in love. And once you fall in love, it doesn't matter if you're compatible or not, you are going to go forward with the relationship if you fall in love. <laughs> you got to keep on going forward. Your mind will be telling you this ain't right. We're not a good match. Your heart is going to tell your mind, fuck you. I'm doing this shit. I don't give a damn what you say. So have that pet peeve talk. That pet peeve talk. Okay, such, such. First of all, this is what I like about you. Now, this is what I don't like. Why are you telling this person this? Because you want to at least let that person know exactly how you feel and what it is that you like about them, but more importantly, what it is you don't like. Because you want to give them a chance to correct any issues if they have some. Here's the thing you have to be prepared about. You cannot change people. Do not try to change people. You can try to help improve, but you cannot change people. So when you tell that person you don't like this and you don't like that, know that more than likely that person is not going to change. They may make an adjustment for you temporarily, but more than likely, whatever it is that you don't like, they're not going to change. Okay? Now you have to make up your mind that if that person don't change, that you are going to stand by them and love them no matter what, to the point to whereas that pet peeve don't even bother you no more. You embrace the pet peeve. Doesn't even bother, bother you anymore. You embrace it to where it don't bother you to the extent that you don't even complain about it. It don't get under your skin. You just say, well, you know, that's my baby. You know, she like to fart a lot. You know, that's, that's just that's my, that's, that's my baby, you know. <laughs> hey, you know, that's, that's, that's my baby. You know, he, he, uh, you know, he, he's, he got bad breath, but you know, I love him. You know, that's my baby. She ain't the sharpest knife in the draw, but that's my baby. I love him. You know, that's my baby. He can't dress, but I love him. That's my baby. You know, you got to be able to embrace those pet peeves because more than likely they are going to live with those for most of their days. If you can accept that part and when you tell that person what your pet peeves is, then they got to tell you what theirs are. And then they have to have the same type of mentality. If you don't change, can I accept them as they are? Totally, if they never change. Can I embrace those pet peeves? Because if you cannot embrace those pet peeves, they are going to haunt you. And you will resent. You will resent it because in your mind, you're going to say you settle. The first time, when they start doing little things that piss you off and getting under your skin, you're going to be like, <laughs> one day you're just going to be looking at them sitting on the sofa or something. You're going to be like, they're going to be laying down asleep. You're just going to be, be like, man, I settled. You did what I'm saying? So embrace those pet peeves. Have the pet peeve talk. And I'm saying again, this is before you fall in love. This is when you catch yourself falling and when you're falling, when you're spending a lot of time with a person. When you start spending a lot of time with a person. I mean, you like that person's company. And at any point, you can fall in love. You probably got with that person just for sex or whatever. But next thing you know, y'all got three kids. You see what I'm saying? Pet peeves and all. Bad breath and all. Bad budgeting and all.
gossiping and all, cussing and all, uh, violence and all, bad in-laws and all, all of those things come with it. If you can embrace and accept that person for exactly who they are, if you can get through that part and then always sewing into the relationship, investing into the relationship, not keeping score because people who keep score in a relationship as part of a losing tradition do not keep score. Always ask what you can do for your partner, not what your partner can do for you. No more talk. What the ladies talking about? Damn.